All right, guys, so Doman should be out on the NA version of the game, and if he is not out, then boy, I'm gonna feel really stupid. But I am putting this out as soon as the whole like pre-release campaign goes down. So unless they're going to be like pre-release campaign part two, I have a really good feeling that he should be out by the time this video goes up. And Doman is one of those characters that a lot of people have been looking forward to because he's just a very, very strong servant overall. Regardless if you can take advantage of the whole chaotic evil niche that he's got going on where he can buff both chaotic and evil characters individually and then if they're chaotic evil they can just take advantage of both sides of his buffs. He's also got really good ways to debuff the enemy. You can use him for farming. An alter ego class means he's really good for mixed class nodes as long as there's no like knight class servants but then again just slap you know a uh black grail on that bad boy and call it a day he's definitely a very very powerful servant but is he worth your saint courts with all the other servants that are going to be coming up for the remainder of this year and at the beginning of next year well first and foremost let's actually talk about what this guy does but before we do make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for daily fgo content and make sure you peep my twitch down in the description down below where i stream every weekday at about 6 p.m eastern standard time so without further delay let's go ahead and just start diving right into this starting off with doman's hits and it's so nice to go from like year one low star rarity servants to a new modern servant because this guy's hits are just like the chef's kiss He's got very powerful quick cards with four hits apiece, very strong arts cards with three hits apiece, the five hit extra attack while also rocking a very solid natural 0.7% NP gain with his NP also having a very solid five hits on it if you want to use him for farming. It just means that generally this guy can drop a couple of stars even though his star gen is a little bit low just off the fact that he's got decent hits on the quick cards. If you're doing crits with this servant, you're going to be refunding a really good amount of your NP gain back. And just overall, it makes his style of gameplay very fluid, right? He's not one of those servants where you're going to be really reliant on just his skills. His actual hits can also kind of get you to refunds on the NP. Before we actually talk about his actual main skills, I want to talk about his passives because Doman basically has five passive skills. You could say he has six, but High Servant doesn't really do anything. But he has just a lot of really good stuff slammed in here. So first and foremost, he's got a passive arts buff to not only help the damage of his arts cards, but more importantly, help the refund of those arts cards. He has an increase to his debuff success rate because this dude can drop like 80 different debuffs on the enemy. So it's really important that they're sticking. He has a 20% innate debuff resistance, meaning... As long as the debuff chance is at least just base 100%, he has a 1 in 5 chance of just outright negating that. He buffs his insta-kill success rate, spoiler alert, he has insta-kill on his NP, which isn't super great for boss fights, but it is really nice for farming nodes where you might be able to snag some insta-kill on bronze and silver enemies. And then he also takes a little bit from the Avenger class and buffs his NP generation rate whenever he takes an attack. So if you're finding that you're not genning enough stars with your Doman or you're not getting consistent enough crits with the arts and quick cards to refund his NP and the battery's not doing it for you, well, every time this guy takes just a slight gust of wind his direction, he's going to refund a metric butt ton of his NP. But now let's actually start getting into the goods starting off with skill one and this is quite a chunky skill already so first and foremost he's reducing all enemies attack by 20 percent for three turns and their defense by 30 percent for three turns that in and of itself would already be really good because in a way it's buffing the party survivability by making sure that the enemies don't hit you as hard and he's actually buffing up the entire party's damage because he's lowering all enemies defense by 30 percent and that applies to everyone that can actually tag those enemies that the debuff actually lands on but again that kind of ties into his passive skill where he's getting that little bit of extra buff to actually landing those debuffs but then that's not even it he also has terror and confusion to the entire enemy party basically terror every single turn for three turns is going to try to stun one of the enemies right now it'll only do this once but it'll try to do it to every single one of them so right effectively it can kind of be a mass stun or it can be like enemy number one gets stunned on turn one and then two and three get stunned on the next turn it's just very nice for disrupting your enemy and then confusion is the exact same thing except it seals their skills 
And so this can be really nice from preventing your opponents from say, activating a invincibility buff when they're about to die, their guts, their dodge. We all know bosses like to do stuff like that. It's also really nice from preventing them from like, activating a battery out of nowhere i know we've all seen like an enemy they're on like that third or fourth tick and you're like man i really hope they don't pop that battery and they just annihilate me well this is going to prevent that if you actually land the confusion and then he's also going to hit them with just a little sprinkle of curse which can be really nice if you're going to pair him with someone like say jacques de mole who has a special damage mod against cursed enemies and is also a quick servant that's all just the first skill. Things just get better and better as we go along. So you know how I said he has some pretty decent survivability for the entire party because he's lowering their attack? Well, his second skill gives him two guts for five turns on a seven turn cooldown, meaning a, the fact that it lasts for five turns on a seven turn cooldown means that this is generally always going to be up. You're always gonna have that insulation with the guts, but then two, it's two guts and they both revive him with 3k HP. Meaning Doman is a really hard guy to actually get rid of. Not only are your enemies not doing a whole lot of damage to you, but he's also basically got three lives. You gotta break through both guts and then his actual HP bar to actually down this guy, which is really good because if you'll recall, Quick isn't exactly known for their high survivability. Scotty's got like the one hit of evasion she can give you on the NP. That's generally not going to be good enough. So it's really good that Doman has so much invested into his own survivability, but then it, you see the other effects of this skill. On two individual effects, he can increase the critical damage of evil alignment and chaotic alignment enemies, giving them a 50% critical damage buff for three turns. And if you happen to be chaotic and evil, you're getting 100% crit damage for three turns, which is the same crit damage buff that Merlin gives for only one turn. And it's not like the chaotic evil servants are terrible, right? There's actually some really strong servants in here. In fact, someone like Huion literally just released, who's also a very strong quick servant that you could pair her with, uh, Ashia Doman over here. Jolter, if you really want to go crazy, you could have like double Doman supporting a Jolter, and she could go absolutely ham Tara with him, lowering defense, lowering the attack to give her survivability and bonus damage, then basically 200% crit damage which you know is going to make your jolter go even harder and then if you look at the third skill 40 percent attack because again like the second skill it's split into two different buffs for evil and chaotic they're getting a 20 percent attack buff individually for both for three turns on a seven turn cooldown while he himself is getting an 80 percent battery and hitting the entire enemy party with curse for five turns again very good synergy with those servants that like to have people cursed and also very good synergy with chaotic evil servants now i know that i'm specifically like pointing out someone like jolter but keep in mind there's other guys like who alter who would also do really good with this the fact that you could synergize him with oberon who already does insane damage with his np let's just have him do insane crits as well there is Big Ushi, who's going to be coming out soon on the NA version, who also is Chaotic Evil. There are just a lot of people on this list you can pair him with. And then even then, don't forget that even if they're just Chaotic and or Evil, they still get the 50% crit damage and the 20% attack buff, which is still pretty decent. And it's one of the reasons though that like Doman can get kind of disgusting when you have two of them floating around and then just some Chaotic Evil person who's just really good. Because keep in mind, Doman doesn't actually hand out like any specific card type buff. So you could literally just slap him together with Jolter because you've got basically two quick servants. They're just going to be genning stars all over the place doing quick chains. And then whenever you get like a nice Jolter brave chain, you just pop her first skill, absorb all the stars and you blow up the enemy. Again, I know that I'm talking a lot about Jolter because I'm a huge Jolter simp, but you can effectively do this for any of the other servants that you want to pair Doman with. I guess the weakest thing about him is actually just his NP. It's nice that it's AoE because you can use him for farming if you don't have anybody else, but essentially it's just like stacking on 80 different layers of curse and then hitting him with evil curse so they take even more damage, and then it's got an insta-kill meme, so if you're using him for farming and maybe you've only got him like NP1 and you're really relying on getting like insta-kills on some of the goons, or maybe you're doing like a boss fight and you have like the main big servant boss, but he's got like bronze enemies around him. Maybe he could like insta-kill them. 
it does kind of come in handy sometimes if it's like, oh, the boss is like a rider, but the goons around him are like sabers and lancers, but they're bronze, so he could potentially insta-kill them and get around his type disadvantage from being an alter ego. It has a little bit of importance, so just kind of keep that in mind, you can use him that way. He's also like super anti alter ego. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that his special bonus for his append skill is that he does even more damage against alter egos. So if you're just like particularly struggling with them, maybe you didn't pull someone like Kama for instance, you could just use this guy as your alter ego killer. He'll do a pretty good job. Even if he's got an AOE NP and it's like a single target boss, the dude can still do insane crits. He can still hit them very, very hard with stuff like that especially if you want to use him as your main DPS, right? You want to just like throw a Scotty in the mix and just have a free 100% quick crit damage just floating around. So yeah, this guy definitely does live up to the hype. And if you want to summon for him, there's like absolutely no reason not to. He's definitely worth your Saint Quartz. You will get a lot of value out of him. It's just kind of a matter of like, okay, Ibuki's coming out for the second banner for high-end kill and you know, we're all really looking forward to Muramasa coming out for New Year's. Super Orion also comes back. And there's some people that are looking forward to Vitra. She's going to be around for Christmas. And then we know that like Space Ishtar is coming back around early next year. So it's kind of just like keeping in mind that like those are the guys that are kind of coming around. But if you want to summon for like Space Ishtar, but you also really want Doman, you like kind of have enough time. You've got a couple of months in between to save up some Saint Quartz, maybe knock out some interludes get extra Saint Quartz, stuff along those lines. But again, that's kind of up to you in looking at your own box and determining like if you wanna go for Doman or not. Keep in mind, he does have two other raid ups. Unfortunately, they're for Summer 6 and for Summer 7. And if you guys know anything, Summer 7, you're probably not summoning for Doman because that is like an insane lineup of Lady Avalon, Berserker Ibuki, and Ruler Scotty. The lineup is absolutely insane. You're probably not gonna summon for Doman there, and again, that also comes right after Arcweed releasing, so probably aren't going to summon for him at that point. If you want to hit Doman again, you might want to go for Summer 6, because aside from like the actual 5 stars being Okita Alter Saber and Avenger Kama, people don't really seem to care about the 4 stars. I do. I'm super gassed up for Anastasia. But if you're not as gassed up for like Corday or Anastasia or the Summer Canis, you know, if you don't really care about those servants, then maybe you could go ahead and summon on him when he comes back on his raid up if you really want to save up for like Muramasa or something. Just trying to give you guys options. But I think I've said too much. I think I've rambled a bit too long on this guy. Bottom line, he's definitely worth it. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'm out of here. Peace late, guys.